All right, let's continue. Tutorial 2 of Chapter 3. So I'm going to start the new model. And I'm going to name it CO2O3, TO2O2. Okay, according to the book, the Z is the true direction. So I'm going to use XY plane. So sketch on XY plane. And OK. As you can see, it's quite uh, it's like a symmetric based on the x-axis. It's not really good candidate, but uh, I would try to use like a, those a center point of those uh, left side, and I will see how it goes. Okay, I will intentionally try to use like thirty millimeter here going around. All right, so I'm going to start from around here, about thirty. Then about 40, then about another 40. Then now I need to make it as a round, so I'm going to change it to the curve. Try to be close enough to 180. And keep going. Don't worry about exact shape or size yet. Just try to get approximate size as much as possible. And try to line it up. And try to avoid any in, you know, any un, not intended uh, this kind of a constraint. So I'm trying to avoid it. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. And it's curved this way, straight, and go down. There we go. So as you can see, there are a lot of additional information is there, but I try to get. Uh, all I did was try to get the approximate of a shade as much as possible and try to get the close enough size as much as possible. All right, time to add the geometrical constraint. All right, so finish the profile, then I'm going to get into the geometrical constraint. The first, let me start to write uh, a line at first. So, as you can see from the book, it will be a good idea to line up these two perfectly each other collinear. After that I am going to also collinear these two or making one point uh, end point of this line uh, collinear uh, on curve on y. There are many ways you can go with it. So let's start with the collinear of these two. So these two need to be perfectly lined up. That looks good. Then I'm gonna have point on curve. This point will be on the curve, in this case y axis. So this point on the curve. And you can see, right, this is lined it up. Then also I want to make the center of this is lined up with the x axis, right, then make it perfectly lined up here also. So this will be on this axis, on curve. Confirm this I'm talking about the x-axis or horizontal axis of a sketch. There we go. Perfect. As you can see, there are a few missing in the constraint. I need to make this as a tangent. This one is already tangent, so I'm gonna make it as a tangent between these two. There we go. It gets better. And also I need to make this two lines equal size, right? So I'm going to make this and this equal. Well, in some reason, is 90 degree information is there. So I can see there's a vertical constraint already there. So the reason there's a 90 degree uh, temporary dimensions there is we, di we don't have a horizontal constraint yet. So I'm going to add a horizontal constraint on this. So that way I don't need this 90 degree anymore. Uh, then after that, I can add uh, a few more constraints, such as, uh, oh, well, actually we can add, start adding the dimensions over it, then I think it will be fine. Oh, another one here. I want to make this one also exactly at the center. So th that one was point on curve, right? Point on curve. There we go. Much well, better. So now you can see overall everything is perfectly symmetric now. So I can start adding the dimensions. Let's see how it goes. 
the dimensions. According to blue, I have a 60 over this. So I'm going to put the 60 here. There we go. Because I added the center and everything is here, as it, this size is getting smaller, symmetrically is shrinking down. Right? Again, that's how the benefit of having geometrical constraint done earlier before you're doing dimensions. Hopefully, it kind of makes sense. Then I have a 40 for this one. There we go. Because we added a constraint, this and this. Did I add it? I think I did add it, right? This one needs to be equal size. If I didn't, still, it worked it out. Uh, I have another dimension from there to here as 80. Alright, what else do we need? It? Uh, I need a 30 from there to there as a 30. Well, it starts to conflict now because this is already done deal and this is already done deal and automatically already figured it out what it has to be done and with this equal the constraint, the 30 millimeter dimension I added it is actually conflict with what I have. So that is not good, right? So, as you can see, if you're using the constraint wisely, you don't need some of the even dimension you see in the book. So, I'm going to just delete it, right click over the, this over constraint dimensions, and delete it, then there will be no more conflict anymore. Let's see, I need a 20 millimeter for this one. Twenty. Then I need a radius of a 10 for this one. Click. Uh, say I want radial dimensions for this one. According to the blue, I need a 10 millimeter as a radius. There we go. Then I need more radius for this one. According to blue, it's again 10 millimeter. There we go. All right, now as you can see it, still the angle dimension is there. Oh, I can see it. This one is not actually equal distance. That's why. So if I'm grabbing something and if you're moving it, so you can see what is not being confirmed yet. That's why the, this kind of temporary dimension is showing. Again, the way I'm doing is grab all geometry and try to move left and right or up and down. See which way in each way the geometry is still not being constrained. That kind of giving the, the uh, clue that additional dimension or geometry constraint need to be added. So based on this behave, I can see it, this is not equal to this one yet. That's why this kind of a strange additional uh, angle dimension is showing up as auto dimension. So that gives me idea. So I'm going to have another geometrical constraint, equal length, this one to this one. So that makes that there is no way of making the different thing going on. So it is already being confirmed. So you can see it very small amount of dimension you just need to, needed in the sketch to make it as a fully constrained there. Uh, that that's the point. That is the major point of what why you adding the geometrical constraint as much as possible. That's gonna giving you a lot of a uh, simple but ro robust sketches so that your sketch is fully constrained and you don't need to worry about accidentally giving the different geometry for not than necessary. Only thing I needed is a circle here. So I'm going to have a circle, try to grab the same center point of this curve. You can see the curve changed to yellow so that I can click and I can get the size. Or in some reason, if you made a circle not sharing the center point somewhere, so if you made a little bit off, again, I'm trying to avoid any unnecessary dimension. So because I did a click, click, and it's not confirmed yet. The where you mouse click basically and X is not confirmed, uh, considered as a non-confirmed dimensions or position. So I need add the geometrical constraint. And this time I want to show you the concentric. That means the sharing same center point between curves or circle. So the concentric between this and this, and they are going to same center point right away. It gets there. So now, 
the size of this hole it need to be confirmed according to the book that will be the diameter of a 12 millimeter and that's done you can see it so now if you close it again at the bottom the status of a sketch will show up said it is a fully constrained if you accidentally rotate it uh, always you can right click on the empty spot and there is an orient view to sketch that's going to be bring you back to the exact normal view or if you accidentally zoom somewhere you if you kind of lost somewhere you can right click and you can just say uh, uh, fit that will make it the best fit for your screen of what you've been working on all right so sketch is done i'm going to finish then i'm going to extrude the sketch then i think i will do about maybe only 20 20 millimeter then okay then you got the geometry again uh, the home button in the keyboard is is giving you a trimetric view and try to best fit for you if you press end button in your keyboard it will give you isometric view uh, that sometimes is very handy you don't have to try to like right click or to the uh, orient view and try to get trimetric instead of doing it just simply press the home button in the keyboard right away it will give you the trimetric view all right hopefully it makes sense uh, again when you work on the chapter 3 uh, just make mainly focus on the constraint and this time